just it is now time to bring this conversation to our community for some other questions. Joining us in the, in the Hangout uh, is Lyletta Robinson, who's a blogger for, for Chicago Now. We also have Matt Jones, who's a student at the University of Michigan. And we're also joined by Roy Oppenheim, who's a foreclosure defense attorney in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hi, well, thank you for letting me join you today. Um, my question is, and it, and it comes as a uh, former Wall Street attorney who's now a Main Street attorney representing folks who are uh, in foreclosure, and that is, to what degree do you place the implicit economic policy of too big to fail as a cause of the economic crisis of the past several years? All right, Gary, let's start with you. Well, I put it right at the top of the list. Uh, I, I would not have bailed out Wall Street. I think that they made some incredibly bad decisions. They should have been rewarded for those decisions by being allowed to fail. And um, I'm not doing this in a vacuum. I've got a lot of really terrific free market economists that have been advising me all on all of this. And none of them believe that it would have resulted in a system meltdown, uh, but that uh, the free market should be allowed to prevail. It wasn't. Crony capitalism is alive, in this, uh, alive and well in this country. Let new legislation that has passed since makes it even more difficult for these companies to fail. They're being, uh, they're being uh, promoted in the future to take future risk, and the risk is with your and my dollars. Stop. Stop. Roy, do you agree with that assessment that, that you know, they, they say they have economists who say that we would not have gone into a system-wide meltdown do you think that's a fair analysis? Uh, you're asking me that question? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yes. oh. I'm asking uh, you that I, question, Ray. I think that um, what we've done is we've encouraged a too big to fail, which was supposed to be a, 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 uh, a joke, to become actual governmental policy. We, we've encouraged effectively a, a moral hazard where we know that if a bank takes on a risk, that there's a strong likelihood that we as a taxpayer, the Federal Reserve, and the government is going to continue to bail these banks out. At the same time, we've probably hurt the smaller banks because people feel that they're probably safer to invest in the larger banks because if, in fact, there is another meltdown yeah. and the government comes to bail out these large banks, the people who have their savings with the larger banks are probably going to be protected. And that is a form, in my mind, of crony capitalism, and it defeats the very essence of, of a free market. And so that the real question is, do we need more government or less government or more effective government? But the whole notion last night of having more government or less government is not really the issue. How do you maintain a capitalist society, a free market, if the market is really not free, but is imposed by, by large oligarchies that are really controlling the economy? 